night one of the viewers says using this machine on this is like putting out a match with a fire hose well I'm not going to use this one obviously and uh, in case you're interested it comes with one size bigger yet however it also has smaller ones this is the smallest and uh, I'm hoping I can use a size or two bigger oh that's just a little bit too big okay it looks like I'm gonna be able to use the second from the smallest and I don't think it's gonna hit the top of the case no it's gonna fit so that's what we're going to use today. At least we'll start out with this one. Maybe I'll move up one afterwards. We'll see. Now this doesn't have to be too tight, I know I say that a lot, but uh, because of the rotation direction, these are self-tightening. Obviously it's not too big, but then I did know that, right? And another thing, I did promise Uncle Jake, well I didn't promise him, but I told him this clock should be ready by tomorrow night, so I better get something done today. Now what I plan to do is get rid of these uh, corners, of course, and I'm going to see how it would be if I leave most of this, you might call it a little tongue here. But I also want to come back Oh, that's probably a, well, not too far because then the, uh, this uh, piece of wood here will lose strength, but probably come back about this far. Well, I moved a little bit there. Yeah, if I come back like that, whoops, I broke my lid. I don't do retakes, folks. Well, anyway, you get the idea. Okay, I'm all set up here, ready to go. And I've got the uh, dust collector hooked up. And when I turn on the spindle sander, I want to make sure that I'm holding this down tight against the tabletop. The reason being is something light like this. If it was to sort of catch, it could start going around like this. And the motor is turning at 1725 RPM. That's what the spindle speed is. You know, it could, before I could stop it, it could shake this poor little box apart. And we don't want Uncle Jake to be upset with me. So, here we go. You will recall at the beginning I was saying that I wanted to use the largest spindle possible. Well, the reason for that is because the bigger the spindle, the faster the sanding goes. And I know the motor is always turning the same speed, but the surface area uh, of the like inches per second or feet per second or however you want to look at it uh, against the wood is a lot greater, of course, on the larger spindle. These small ones, they go pretty slow. A lot faster than by hand, of course, but kind of slow. Ah. 
I'm just going to let everything run here at real time. I'm not going to speed it up or cut anything out. It could be that there's somebody out there thinking, I'd like to get one of those machines. How well does it work? And maybe they kind of curious about how well does it work with a small spindle. Well, by the time I'm through here, you're going to know. Well, I guess you kind of noticed my, my sanding tube was letting go there. Well, I can fix that. It'll just take me a minute, so bear with me, folks. Now, I could have fixed this without unscrewing this, but I wanted to show you what happened there. I know some of you are interested. This uh, is supposed to go down into here, into this little groove. And then there's a little uh, set screw there, which you're supposed to tighten up against the uh, sandpaper. Not real, real tight, but tight enough. Obviously tighter than it was. Actually, I don't remember checking this ever. So it may have been not tightened from the factory, as tight as it could have been. I don't know what this one's for. It's not a set screw. Anyway, we'll give it another whirl, see what happens.
Well, I'm wondering now if maybe that's possibly not good enough. It's probably in about a sixteenth of an inch. I think I'm going to give it a try. If it's, uh, if the pendulum rod is, you know, rubbing against here, I can always take it apart and do some more. But I think it's going to be okay. Now I did put it back on the sander and go down about another, oh, 64th, maybe 32nd of an inch. Just to play it safe. Just in case this case is not going to be hanging straight on the wall and uh, things start rubbing. Anyway, let's see what we got here. Well, this should work. This should work. Okay. Next thing is, where are we going to locate the speaker? I know there's already some holes in here, but to uh, try and take advantage of those holes, I don't know. Can't go like that. Maybe off to one side. I, I could mount it against the side like this. That, that'd be okay. But it would be best if the openings for the speaker were actually right up against, you know, openings like, like this. I'll think of something. Okay, here's an idea. I'll be if it was mounted on the top. The wire could go in through this hole that's already here. And then, it wouldn't really be seen from the front. Let's just sort of hang it up on the wall and see what that would look like. Now don't go thinking that because you can see a roll of toilet paper, we're in the bathroom. Nope. I took down one of my saw blades. I'm sorry about the shakiness. I'm not using my tripod here. So you have to, you have to get at quite an angle off to the side before you see the speaker. You're right here, you, you don't really see it. Let's try from the other angle. Okay. If you go like this, you can see it. But you're at a, a quite an angle there, and it doesn't really doesn't really look like anything bad. I think that's what I'm going to do. Little by little we're getting it. We got the uh, pendulum figured out here. We got the speaker mounted. And uh, sounds great by the way, I tried it a minute ago. Uh, yeah, and I got the, uh, remember we had that tear out yesterday or day before with the, with the jigsaw? Well, I got that touched up. Not that anybody's going to see it anyway, it's, unless they're laying on their back on the floor underneath the clock. And if they're that drunk, they won't remember anyway. Now, yeah. So, one more thing. Actually, there's several more things, but anyway. Okay, so we got the uh, recessed area here, which is uh, just under a quarter of an inch. And that means that when I put the movement in, this piece here is not, you know, when I tighten the nut up really tight, now you don't want to do it too tight by the way, but if I was, to, if somebody was to, it's going to sort of be pulling this thing out of shape because there's, there's nothing supporting here, it's just supported on the corners. So it could conceivably, uh, you know, bend something out of shape. I don't think it would, but why take a chance? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my washers here, and see if I can't make something up that's going to be about the same thickness. Uh, one more washer. Let's try this. Try this combination. 
Um, not quite. Okay, and that's a little too much. Well, I'll think of something. Anyway, and then after that, the only thing left to do really is determine which hands we're going to use. And uh, at the end of this video, I'm going to show the two or three different styles of hands that I've got. And maybe in the comments below, you can say which ones you like the best. Now, they, they have to, you know, the uh, minute hand has to be long enough to go into the ring here. The, you know, the minute hand ring. So, uh, you know, they can't be too long, they can't be too short, in other words. They have to be just right. I think I've got two or three different pairs. The hands that came off of the original movement won't work on this, unfortunately. Mind you, they were kind of corroded anyway. At least I thought they were. You know what, I think uh, three metal washers is just about right. Yeah. Yeah, three of these is just right. Now, when the batteries are being put in, if a person isn't too careful, it would be quite easy to accidentally twist the movement just a little bit crooked. Um, so what I want to do is I want to make up shims just the right size to go just above the battery compartment here so that when the battery is put in, uh, if it's not put in carefully that is, yeah, I think you get the idea. So I need to make up something just a little bit wider than that. This is the only three styles I've got that I can make fit. Now I know this one is a little bit too long, but it can be snipped off and it'll still look good. These two here are basically the same. Um, you know, want to remember that the black ones they're also white on the other side, so they can be either black or white. I'm not going to say what is my preference. I just want to hear what other people think. And uh, yeah, so uh, what do you think? Uh, number one, number two, or number three? Now, of course, inevitably it's going to be up to Mr. and Mrs. Uncle Jake, but you can put in your two cents worth. In the meantime, Thanks for watching and we'll see you tomorrow.